everybody, Carla Hall here. A lot of you have heard me say, if you're not in a good mood, the only thing you should make is a reservation. <laughs> but as we shelter in place, going out to eat at a restaurant, it's just not possible. So I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. A hookup, if you will. Y'all ready? Okay, well here it is. My go-to is ordering direct from my chef friends over at Cuisine Solutions. The food is prepared sous vide style. It's a method of vacuum sealing food in a bag and cooking it in a water bath at a precise temperature. I mean, without getting all technical with the details, basically all that flavor that's in the bag gets locked in and voila, you order and a restaurant quality meal is sent directly to your home. What you have to do is heat it up in your oven or in the microwave or in a pot of boiling water. It's that easy. Because I'm doing a taco bar, I thought I would get the pork shoulder and this is called a pork cushion and this is how it comes. So let's look at it. Okay, so instructions right here heating instructions and a picture and this is the package and you can see and I've had it out just a little bit but it's not quite thawed and you can see all of those juices and everything so I peel the plastic back and then I have my dish I'm gonna I'm gonna go into the oven so I have my dish here it all out just like that. So I'm just gonna go, it says for best taste, thaw before heating. All right, so I'm just gonna let this um, sit for a minute and let this thaw out, okay? All right, now what's next? I have some salmon here, and I thought the salmon would be perfect for fish tacos. So I'm gonna open up this, and you can, and you see that they're in all of these packages, so you can just do whatever you want or, or not. They also have chicken, so if you want to do chicken tacos, you can do that. I'm going to just take some pieces out. I think I'll take out, it's just two of us. So I'm gonna take out three pieces. With this, I decided to get one of their sauces because I thought that, um, just again, a lot less work. I decided to get their Asian barbecue sauce. So again, it comes with the heating instructions. And this is the sauce, just like this. And then you can open it up very easily with this peel apart plastic. Now what I did was put it in a jar so you can easily store it like this. So you can put it into smaller containers and store it like that. Mm, it smells so good. It's like hoisin and all of these spices. This is going to go really great with a pineapple and mango salsa that I'm going to put with this fish. So I'm going to take some of this Asian sauce and just put it right on top of the salmon. And it's already cooked, so it goes into the oven at 300 and... 50 degrees for like 25 minutes. Look at that. So I'm gonna set that aside. All right, so we have our pork, we have our salmon, and I was thinking maybe something kind of like a chili, something for vegetarians, and they have a vegan chili, heating instructions right here. And so this has been sitting out a little bit. So I'm gonna just take my packet and dump it right into my pot. So I got one more thing, and that was this fire roasted red pepper sauce. And it comes like this. You could even cut chunks off and then freeze it and put it back in its bag, which I have done before. It's super, super easy. So what I have done I put it in a jar so I can use this on my pork. So I think once that gets roasted, I'm gonna put this all over the pork and let that roast up. Mm, it's gonna be 
be so delicious because we're going to be making peppers and onions, sort of like fajita vegetables. This is also the best base for a roasted red pepper soup. So you can take this, take a little veggie stock, whiz it up, maybe add a splash of cream, and you have a really, really delicious soup. But we're on Cinco de Mayo, so let's get it done. With our pork shoulder, and we're going to put all of those roasted red peppers on them, I want to do a cabbage slaw, which is super, super simple. We're just going to take um, regular cabbage, green cabbage, but if you have red cabbage, you can use that. If you don't have cabbage or if you don't like cabbage, you can use romaine lettuce. So we're going to take this and I'm going to slice it really, really thin. See how thin I am cutting the cabbage. If you have a box grater, you may be able to just um, do the side of the box grater with the slicer, or if you have a um, if you have a mandolin, you can also use that. So I'm just going to keep cutting. Okay, look at that. So again, make as much or as little as you want. I'll have the recipes available. You can always have the recipe or multiply it up. The reason that I love Cinco de Mayo is because we're celebrating the culture and history of Mexicans and, and honoring their traditions. And All right, so I have my cabbage. I put in some oregano. If you don't have oregano, you can use basil, you can use thyme. Um, you can use za'atar or any kind of like a dried herb. It, it, it'll be delicious. And I'm gonna add in some salt. So the salt is gonna pull out some of the water in the cabbage. And then I'm gonna add some vinegar. Now I happen to order these vinegars, I happen to order these vinegars from Lindera Farms and they are delicious. I have cherry blossom vinegar because I'm here in DC and I want to try cherry blossom vinegar. This is an Applejack vinegar. Um, I love a good puffer, so you all know, so I'm always trying out these new vinegars. So, uh, a splash of vinegar. It smells unbelievable. And I'm not weighing this down with a lot of spices and everything because the pork will have spices. I'm using that roasted red pepper sauce. That'll be all um, flavorful. So really, this is a supporting cast. It's gonna add some crunch and texture to those tacos. All right, so let's see. Mm -hmm. Wow, that vinegar, that floral note really comes through, it's nice. All right, so we'll set this aside. So a taco bar wouldn't be a taco bar without fajita vegetables. So I'm taking um, different color peppers just, just use whatever you have. I have green, yellow, and red. If you have orange, that's fine. If you have poblanos, that's fine. If you just have um, jalapenos, that's fine. Um, really make this your own. And, and I know that a lot of us are just making do with what we have. So this is really just um, cooked vegetables that we're gonna put onto our taco. You may discover something that is amazing. You may have some frozen broccoli and you thaw that out and pat them dry and toss them in oil and put them in the oven with onion powder, garlic powder, and they get all charred and then that's what you use on your taco. I mean, this is an opportunity to get creative with what you have. These are already washed. Make sure you wash your produce really well. All right, so you see how I can see right through this, right? So now I can actually go in and take these seeds right out. I'm gonna take the seeds out and I'm just gonna cut around the membranes of the pepper. You can also do this like this. So now I have these pieces of pepper that are perfectly ready to be sliced into strips. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my red. So you see here, what I'm doing is cutting right around 
this C pack. You see? So the seeds are all intact. Let's line up our peppers. It's always easier to cut your pepper on the inside. And if you have a, if you have a, a really sharp knife, you can cut it from the skin side, but have the skin side down. I like mine fairly thin. If you like your peppers thick, then go ahead and cut them thicker. All right. So there are my peppers, and now I'm gonna cut my onions. Now right here, I have a little bit of the core in the onion, so what I'm gonna do is cut that out. On both sides, I'm gonna cut the core out. And the reason I'm doing that is because when I cut my onions down like this into strips, I don't want that core keeping my onions together. You got that? You guys ready? You ready to move on? All right, so let's cook these babies. Um, my pan is rather small, so I'm not gonna cook them all at the same time. I'm gonna cook my peppers first because I really wanna get those charred, so I want those to go right into the skillet. One thing that I'm gonna do is not put my oil in the skillet, but I'm going to coat my peppers in oil so that when they turn over, I have just enough oil for them to char. And still, again, keeping in mind how much food is going into the skillet at one time. Let them char, don't touch it. You want those peppers to get nice and charred. If you don't have a cast iron skillet and you have a non-stick skillet or you have a stainless steel skillet, it's perfectly fine. This is just another, um, another tool to use. If you don't want to cook on top of your stove, and you want to toss them in oil and then put them in the oven, toss them in oil and salt really high heat, like 450, but your oven is already at 425 with the pork in there, so go ahead and put them in that hot oven. Oh, it's smelling so good. It's all charred and, ah, y'all. You may have to turn on the fan. Look at this. Y'all, you, you know, I'm always saying there's flavor in the brown, so do not be afraid to get some char and dark bits on those peppers. That's going to make you feel like you're in that restaurant. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, y'all? Come on. Oh, yeah. I want char, but I still want to keep them with some texture. I want to have that sweetness of the pepper in my taco. Oh, this looks amazing. The reason that I toss the vegetables in the oil is so that I don't put a bunch of oil in the bottom of my pan and then they get too greasy. That just isn't pleasant. So this way, by putting the oil on the vegetables and tossing them, you get the tool of the oil, which is not to stick and just add in a little flavor. You can always add more oil, but you can't take it out. Okay, I'm just going to let it sit. I don't keep moving the food. If you keep moving the food, it's not going to be browning. You need to let the stove do what the stove is going to do. And I'm going to go right into the same bowl. Mm. Y'all, but I also want to check on the pork. And let me see or show you all what's happening. So this is our pork, and you can see all of these juices, so all those beautiful juices, and it's getting nice and brown. Um, what I'm going to do is take, I'm going to take my roasted red pepper sauce and put over the pork just to cover it. And then now the red pepper sauce is going to be in those pork juices. And then later on, I'll keep basting and making sure that, that is getting nice and glazed. And honestly, that's it. So back into the oven we go. Okay. All right. Y'all know I'm keeping it real with y'all. 
also, I thought I was going to do a mango and pineapple salsa. I don't know where the mango is. So I'm just going to do this pineapple salsa. If you have cucumbers, you can use that. So I'm going to do pineapple and a jalapeno, some red onion, scallions, and cilantro, a little bit of lime zest and juice. It's, it's just that simple. But honestly, you can make it as simple or as elaborate as you, as you want. You can make it as simple or as elaborate as you want. If you want to add avocado to it, you can do that. If you want to just do a tomato salsa, like a pico de gallo, you can do that. That would be um, tomatoes and garlic, some onions, jalapeno, um, and just toss that together, salt and pepper, cilantro if you want. Um, but, but really, this is about what you have and how you eat, what you want to eat. So I am going to cut up my pineapple. And if you have canned pineapple, you can use that. If you have a pineapple that already came cut up from the grocery store, you can use that. Cutting around the pineapple, I'm using this middle part of my knife. And I don't want to lob off the pineapple so it's just a, a square. So you can see how the pineapple is still round. Sometimes when people take these, they, they take like a whole side of the pineapple off. So I didn't take a lot of skin off. Okay. So a, a quarter inch dice. Again, because I want it to be small enough where it can um, fit on the taco. So this I'm doing these planks. This is what's called a plank. So this is what my pineapple looks like. You see? So I've done these cuts here. Around the other side, same thing. I'm cutting around the core. And the person who is cutting the pineapple gets the core. So this will be my treat later. Yes, it will be. Mm -hmm. And if you're cutting the pineapple, you get the core. Kind of like a uh, corn on the top, right? right? So I'm stacking. without the mango that I thought I had. But you know, again, we are making do. You, in real time, I am showing you what to do when you make do. Cucumber really would be good in this, so it would be really nice and refreshing, especially with that Asian sauce. Delicious, so I'm putting all this in my bowl. So now I'm gonna use, I was gonna use a cup of the pineapple, but because that's gonna be pretty much our main thing, I'm using a little bit more. You can use whatever fruit you want. Okay? And I'm going to cut my onion up. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm going to start cutting my onion. And you see these little nicks? I'm not going to cut past the side of the onion because I want the onion to stay together. So, Make little notches with the tip of your knife in the onion. You see that? You see that? See those little notches? And this is all together. So now what I'm going to do is just go really thinly, cut straight down, and now I have this really small, nice dice of my onion. Okay. Now I'm going to add a little bit of scallion. I like scallions so much. I actually don't mind the white part, so I'm going to cut the whites as well, but a little thinner than the green, than the green parts. So I'm taking some cilantro and I'm chopping this up. It's all clean and dried. Dry it first. If you don't like cilantro, you can use just parsley. If you don't like the greens at all, you can leave it out. If you want to do basil, you can do that too. So I'm going to use the same process that I did for my sweet peppers with this jalapeno. 
So I'm cutting the top and the tip off. I'm looking inside so that I can see exactly how I want to cut straight down and around the seeds. And there are the seeds. See? Seeds are all right there. We're putting those in our trash bowl. And now I'm dicing up the jalapenos really fine. You never know when one is really spicy. And I don't like spice that much. But if you like spice, go for it. Look, I even have some habaneros. So if you want to do the habanero, I can't handle it. I can handle those in a soup when I slip them. But I just can't handle them in um, raw things, like diced up. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a lightweight. So we're almost finished with this. I am dicing up the jalapeno. So a little bit of lime zest. And if you want a little bit of garlic in your salsa, get a garlic clove. I just want a little bit. Even though it's with the fruit, I like it. And then I'm going to use the microplane too. And some of that lime juice goes in there. And I'm just doing a little bit of oil. Some salt. And now I'm just mixing this up. Checking on my pork and just give it a base. Just go ahead and oh my gosh, there happens to be a loose piece. I have to eat that. <laughs> this is so tender. It is melting in my mouth. Oh my god. Really. I can't wait for you to try it. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. And I'm going to do a quick cream sauce, like a sour cream, but with jalapeno. If this is too spicy for you, don't worry about it. I'm going to keep some of the seeds because I want it to be somewhat spicy. And this is going to be for the pork tacos. Well, you can use it on anything, but I think it would be really nice. It's going to go to the pork. So I just cut up a rough chop of jalapenos. I'm going to use one more. All right. And now <clears throat> I'm just going to take a... Um, Immersion blender and blend this up. Okay, it's chopping up. So now what I want to do is add some of my sour cream. Just a little bit to get it going a little more. And a little bit of salt. And I'm honestly going to add just a glug of olive oil. I think this is going to be spicy. Okay. So what I have here now is just, it's the kind of puree is really liquid. It's really kind of liquidy, but I'm going to add in more sour cream. Going back in with the immersion blender. All right, so this is a jalapeno crema that I've made. And let me get out a spoon and taste it and see if it needs anything for seasoning. Ooh, that is so simple and so nice. I'm gonna add just a pinch of salt. And I might even add 
a little bit of lime zest. I'm not going to add the juice because the juice is going to oxidize that bright green color of the jalapeno. So I'm not going to add that. Avocado crema is done. Y'all, we're just about there, really. We have to put the salmon in and then we put it all together. Taking the pork out, the vegan chili is on the stove heating up. Make sure that you stir that. The salmon is in. And now I'm just gonna finish up grating some cotija cheese. And if you want to do cheddar, you can do that as well. Yes. And next stop, we're eating. So this is our buffet. We've got the vegan chili. I've got the pork shoulder, the cushion with the fajita vegetables, the salmon with that Asian barbecue sauce. I made a pineapple salsa. I've got the jalapeno crema our cabbage and smashed avocado. I've got the grated cotija cheese, a little bit of onions here. I just have some tortilla chips and then I put our tortillas in that cloth and I'm excited. I can't wait to eat. I mean, the drinks are on y'all. Margarita, sangria, whatever you're doing, it's all on you, but enjoy. Thanks Cuisine Solutions. Thanks for making it really easy. Okay, was that so hard? I mean, all the proteins were done and honestly, it went from the freezer to our oven. Okay, it was a little bit of work, but we had fun together, didn't we? I had fun with you all. All right, stay tuned for some other ideas and celebrations because sheltering in place doesn't mean that you can't have restaurant quality food.